Well, hello my lovelies. I hope you're doing well today. Um, this is the vlog number two. So if you didn't see vlog number one about the silk dress DIY that I'm making right now, uh, go watch that one first because you're just going to start to a random place right now. So go back and watch number one first and then watch this one. So today I'm going to uh, work on that dress again and continue cutting my pattern and then sewing everything up, showing you a few tricks as I sew along. I Hopefully you enjoyed this as well. I figured also today I should show you the fabric. Sorry, my clothes is all uh, messed up right now. That's my favorite shirt. I wear it all the time but it is messed up now this is a future project we're gonna be making this super awesome shirt that i love so yeah subscribe now make sure you don't miss any of these vlogs because you're gonna learn a lot of stuff with me so returning to the silk dress so this is the fabric it's a nice burgundy I have the uh, silk satin right here and the silk chiffon, well, it's not really chiffon. It's, a, it's just a really, 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 really thin tool. Some people may think it's chiffon, but it's not. But it's a very, very thin tool, which is very delicate and very luxurious looking. It is my favorite uh, tool. I you always use this. Um, brand well this supplier basically i do business with a whole bunch of suppliers around the world and i always use this supplier because he has such a good quality of tool let me know in the comment section if you would be interested in purchasing fabric from me i can import and export uh, to you whatever amount of fabrics you need it may take a little bit of time to receive, but um, you'll be using exactly the same fabric as I'm using, which could be, you know, useful, especially if you're doing these projects along with me for yourself. And I do have a very nice selection of um, suppliers. They're hard to deal with, so if you're interested in getting something from me, just let me know. Uh, like, oh, look, Emmanuel, I'd like to have uh, this fabric, so could you like hook me up? I would definitely hook you up with whatever you need. Just leave me a comment or uh, contact me on my Instagram. My handle is at Imanb Design. This is my main handle for wedding stuff, so uh, you can contact me there or email me through the website. Everything is in the comment section. I always put everything there, so. If you'd want to talk to me privately, just feel free to text me, uh, no, not text me, fire me a message on Instagram. I think it's just the easiest thing for me or just an email through the website. If you need to call me, well, you know, good luck finding my phone number. I won't give it to you. <laughs> anyway, um, I felt like because this is going to be a fall uh, affair, that this dark burgundy would work really well and I'm also going to make a bow tie in the silk chiffon for my husband to match with my dress and hopefully we look the part for our good friend Matt's wedding and his beautiful bride to be. So uh, let's get started with the remaining of the dress. We're going to be stitching as much as possible today for doing a fitting in the next vlog. Or maybe even today I'll have some time to do to do it, but maybe I won't. So it depends. If I do, I do. If I don't, I don't. And then it'll just be in a later vlog. So let's get started.
this is my trick to do the dart. I place a pin through my pattern and the two layers of fabric and then remove the whole pattern piece. And then I'm left with the pin on this side and I turn it over and I'm left with the pin on that side now. So I'll just insert another pin to mark my dart right here. So that's the edge of uh, where my stitch should finish. And then obviously you don't do as I do, but as I say, don't forget to cut your uh, little Notch here, which I did, so I'm gonna have to replace my pattern over and then cut my notch. Cut this off right here. So now we know where it's supposed to start and where it's supposed to hand. On the machine, I pull the top thread quite a bit to give me a guideline as I sew this dart. And then I, I fold my dart properly as such. Just like that and then I know my pin is supposed to be right in the middle of my dart so I make sure it's flat all over my notches are here and I'm gonna stitch the beginning of it just like that back and forth and then I'm going to lower my needle in to lock my location and I'll place my skirt and then uh, use my thread all the way to my pin to make myself a guideline to sew my dart right there. This is an easy, quick way to do your dart and it's really straight and you don't have to mark your line in between your dart. You know, like for some people, they would just take a chalk and and mark the dart all the way through. I don't like to do that, it's a waste of time. If you know how to sew, this trick should be all good for you. Obviously, this is not a beginner uh, way to sew the dart. If you're a beginner, I would just trace it. But if you're not, we just, Sew it like this with the thread line and it, you see it's very straight and then once you get to this area you got to curve a little bit to go and snatch this area here so there you go that's what it is that's how you do it the darts are by far the longest thing that you sew on your garment but they are the most important. They are the one who gives shapes to your garment. And it's really important that you do them properly so that your garment fits really well. And it's also a way to adjust uh, your garment as well, uh, depending on what your fit needs to be as like sometimes you just need a longer or a shorter dart to fit the garment properly depending on who you're making the clothes for so there's nothing less and you'll have a very nice dart that we're gonna go and hire once we're done assembling the whole thing
always try to cut all of my thread as I go so it's not in the way. And the reason why I curve my dart is because I want to avoid to have this little pointy effect at the bottom of my dart. And by doing it on a curve, it makes uh, the it, it makes this dart pretend like it's a princess seam instead of just being a straight dart. So that's it. Just makes it a little bit more um, professional looking. It sucks when, yeah, so this is here. You can hear daddy is watching him, so, but you see, you'll see the difference if you try to do your, your dart like that. It will make a big difference in your sewing quality, so. You pretend like it's a princess seam, but it's curving. And then this way at the edge here, it's not like flappy. So once you iron it, it just lays flatter. So it's just, it just looks nicer once it's done. Now we're just gonna sew the side seam of that skirt. my two backs and just so the front part and obviously like we're gonna iron before stitching the waistband oops I pulled a little too hard I'll start over there you go Also, like when I do so um, long stitch, what I like to do is to pivot like this a little bit, just a slight pivot, so that it's looser on the top but tighter at the bottom. This way, it feeds itself on the foot at the same time. The two layers, I mean. So just, just a little movement. Doesn't have to be like so big. It's just a little trick so that your your seams are equal. Just gives it a, a small little tension. Um, and by twisting it, it makes the bottom part uh, lay over the top part much better. So there we go. And it makes a very smooth, straight seam with no gathers at the back which is what you want. You don't want no gathers in the back and then this top part being stretched out. It's all about the technique when you sew. And how you hold your fabric and how you stitch them together as it goes through the foot. It makes a big difference in the quality of your sewing. As you see, I always start my stitch with a back and forth to make sure all of my seams are locked properly. I know some people, they like to hand knot the beginning and end of their seam, but I don't do that. It's a waste of my time, so. Going back and forth makes it really solid and it's never gonna unstitch only unless you want it to. To iron your garment, um, the first step is really setting your iron at the right temperature, I guess. Uh, you don't want to burn your fabric. This is cotton polyester, so I don't really care, and it's not for 
uh, something that I'm going to wear. It's just for a fitting. So um, I'm just gonna sit up at the highest temperature so this way I can just iron it really fast. But for example, when I do the final product, I will not uh, use this iron at full force. Just, um, at the lowest temperature because it's silk, right? And yeah, I'm using my hem to uh, curve my dart properly because this way uh, it follows somewhat the shape of what the body would do. Oh, phone call. Sorry about that, just a delivery. So just go around and open all of your seam, even though it's not a final product. It just, it's just easier for your fitting when you do the uh, hardening. Everybody is here at the house right now and I'm, uh, it is uh, Stan, my husband who's watching Silas right now, my two year old, so if you hear the baby or my husband's voice, it's uh, sorry about that. It is life. You work when you can. So, you see, I use my arm for uh, the curves. I like to iron my curves really well. And I don't like to just flatten them up. It just use less because you're making a curve in your pattern in order for it to follow your body. And then when you iron it flat, it just disrupts the shape that you're trying to create so that your body fits in the garment. So you want this seam to be very nice and curvy, but this part here to be straight, which is what it's supposed to be. And then I will go also and uh, try to iron all of the wrinkles at the same time. So that when I fit the garment on my mannequin, it just looks better. And it's easier when it looks better to fit the garment. So again, for the dart, I'll just use my hand. You see, if, when you use it, it just plays itself so well. Like, it's so much easier to do it like that. So if you're a sore and you don't have a ham or a sleeve uh, insert to it, like higher in your uh, seam in like a tunnel or a sleeve, uh, I highly suggest that you get these. They're fairly affordable and I've had these for 15 years. Yes, okay, there's like stain on it and they're disgusting, but it's just water stain. So they are good for like forever, unless you pierce them and they empty it out. Uh, the other one that I have is this one here. I use it, it's thinner and longer, and I use it for like pants and sleeves to iron inside of like a tunnel type of like garment. So, Definitely, if you don't have these, uh, this should be your next purchase. I'll try to link something on Amazon. Maybe they have something similar. If I found something that I and is a good quality that I would suggest that you buy, uh, I will link it below in the comment section. Uh, no, actually in the description section, not the comment section. But you know, if I don't find anything, I'm sorry. Uh, Try to visit your local uh, craft store. They might have some or local like, sewing store. Let me go And Silas is back from getting the packages. Is that mine or yours? Oh, okay. I'll take a break and open my package. All right. I just received an overly packaged uh, package. There's like the shipping bag and then this bubble wrap for that I'm going to use on a wedding dress really soon. Let me open this up for you. I hate those bubble wraps. There's such a, it's such a waste of packaging. I, you can't reuse it because they stick it together so well, you know? It's just disgusting. And this doesn't even like break. This is like a trim. Not even like <laughs> something that breaks. 
And there we go. And a third package. Just to make it even more package. Go with daddy, Silas. Wow! I talked up a baby. Ah, there you go. Let me show you this trim. Open it up a little bit. There you go. It's a cotton fringe that I will be dyeing uh, multiple color uh, for the bride's hem. Uh, it's stitched together here, which is normal. Once you apply it, you unstitch it, but not before because otherwise it gets all tangled up. So keep it nice package in this uh, last plastic package. And I'll show you in the future what it looks like. And if you want to see faster, go on Instagram and you'll see the process of this. So just to show you his one package, two package, three package that's overly packaged and the plastic package so it's lots of packaging all right so let's keep on going on the ironing so i did my two dart now i'm going to do the back part i'll just turn it around it'll just be easier again on the top of this seam there's a curve so i'm going to use my hand to my hand to iron this area like I said, it's in the details, you know, it just makes it a nicer curve. Let me know if you agree with this, if you use this ham or not, well, you sew. And what is your experience with uh, these two uh, articles here? Do you like them? Do you not like them? Do you think it's useless? What are your thoughts about that? Let me know in the comment section and tell me what you think. I'd like to know. Let's do the last dart here. Yeah, also something I'd like to point out. Your iron doesn't have steam. Well, it's not an iron. Get something new. You need the steam to form the fabric. It's super important. Without the steam, the fabric doesn't really place itself. I'll just try to iron some of the wrinkles out. You know, just so that it holds a little bit better. And we're ready to close it off and to apply the waistband. This is the back opening skirt. So we're gonna close it off to where about the zipper should start and then install the waistband all around. All right, so I'm back after a little break. Um, Silas is sleeping for now, so I'll just get some sewing done and I'm going to line the side seam of my waistband with the side seam of my dress and pin uh, the seams together, like literally inside the seam so it doesn't move and it's really well aligned and i'm gonna do the same thing for the other side <clears throat> sorry and let's sew this I don't know if you noticed, but um, when I was ironing my uh, darts, I always ironed them towards the side seams. 
I don't remember why it's like that, that you need to um, iron it towards the side seams. But I remember there's a reason for it. I'm not, I don't remember, but I remember in college when I was uh, learning all of these professional technique with my teacher at the time, she pointed out that ironing your dart that way is uh, the better way that for that your garment looks appropriately made. But I can't for the life of me remember uh, technically what it does to the garment. If you do, let me know in the comment section. I would be really happy to see what the, is your opinion on that. We don't want to sew all the way up in the back. We want to leave a space for the zipper that's supposed to be there. Okay, so skirt is done. The one thing I was left to sew for the bust was this band that goes all the way uh, to the back from the uh, princess seams to the back so I'm gonna be sewing this now so that we can fit it as well at the same time as we fit the rest of the bodice just sew them on a both side all right take two of sewing the band I have thread we're fixed just making sure it's the right side. And let's stitch this down. Align it properly, obviously. And let's go. And yeah, I just realized I have the wrong way. That's just great. Dropping a bunch of needles. Well, okay, today is not my day. Oh yeah, you saw this. This is how how fast it goes when you break your seam properly. Just comes out. Okay, so let's stitch the right side now. Alright. Make this straight. Like this and there you go. Now this is the right side. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna be fitting this on the mannequin, and I'll show you how to do it pay attention as I point out what I'm doing. I won't be talking much during this time, so I'll play some music. Well, it's obviously too small, but, um, if I made a mistake during the pattern, it could be, it looks like it's around here. I missed a space here. So this is where I'm gonna be adding that extra uh, width that I'm missing here because you see that the sleeve is just not placed where it wants to be. It wants to be further down that way. Anyway, we're gonna do the fit and then add whatever's missing to here. Just replace it. Like like I said, this is the first uh, fit, so it's never perfect. There's always a mistake that you do or don't do or whatever happens, you get distracted. So that's why you always have to check your things. 
I know right now that this is definitely an issue that needs to be fixed, so for sure this I'm gonna be taking it in. Because I combined the front part to the back part, so I may have made a mistake when I did that. But it will be fixed, don't worry about it. Obviously the apex was here, I just need to move it there. That's what's happening here. And then we're gonna fit the under glass a little tiny bit. I'm going to have to extend this boosty a little bit lower. I made it a little too uh, crop belly curving my breasts here so I really need to cover this up so that I'll do the same thing on this side remove the thick dart Even after I did the pinning, uh, I use a sharpie fine point to mark all of my uh, main spot, which I feel for me is important. I always need to know uh, what's what just in case the pin falls down and I don't have the reference anymore. So I just go and mark grossly the things we need to know. Okay, here's where uh, we're gonna do the extension. I'm gonna measure with my measuring tape, uh, the extra I need. This is a two uh, centimeter wide uh, um, allowance for the zipper goes here so I need to add two and a quarter of an inch here to be able to close it so here and here so here is two and a quarter two and a quarter I want to say plus and then here is two so here plus two so I'm gonna add one on each side and one and an eighth on each side there and then here uh, we are still missing things I have one centimeter seam allowance so I'm gonna measure and it's plus two and a quarter so plus two and one quarter here to add. All right, let's mark the band. We just need to remove extra width around the bottom. There you go. That's about it. That's the first fit. I feel the light line is pretty good. It's not too close. We'll just see afterwards. Alright, so we're gonna do the uh, skirt now. Um, this is a high waist skirt, so it has to be the seam at the waist and the waistband is above the waist. And yeah, I think it's a little bit big. So we're just gonna pin it here at one centimeter because that's the allowance I gave myself here. But I 
I'm thinking that I will put two instead and then we're going to tie this up around. We need to remove around the waist. So a little bit around the waist. Other side first. Bring it up. to be taken in, the waist needs to be taken in, and that should be good for the first bit. Hey guys, I'm just filming the outro here. I really hope you enjoy this type of like uh, content from me. Let me know in the comment section if it's too much to uh, vlog my day. Maybe I should vlog maybe two or three days or maybe the entire week. Uh, let, me, let me know what you feel about this. Maybe I will just uh, adapt to what you like. Anyway, let me know what is your preferences. How many vlogs do you want to watch from me a week? And maybe I could just keep on filming the process and just condense it a little bit more so that it's less stuff to wash for you but it'll be much more speed up uh, so let me know don't forget to subscribe just down below just hit the bell you know if you want to have the notification uh, of my video being published just hit that bell or just plain subscribe give me a thumbs up give me a like I like likes and share this with your friends or maybe like somebody that in your family that would be interested in my services as usual all of my handles are linked in the below section follow me on instagram on facebook and i have a tiktok but my handle isn't there but you can find me at man big design there um i'm not a pro i just started like i don't know it might look weird but um just check it out if you want if you don't don't and hopefully I see you next vlog. Until then, keep planning. Bye.